So, Andrew, uh, the, the attorney's statement essentially says this all is based on information or, you know, as a result of too afraid to find a real man in real love. So you marry a get for a Birkin bag. And then turn your head while he's in a bunch of that they attended and you said the party was weird. Tell me about that. It's like Biblical Fox was with this big gay man. He was six nine. They called him his name six nine. He had the red hair with big old booty and shit. No, he was gay and I'm like, what the f is going on here? It's just a lot of a lot of weird f dude. You know? They both buy well, they do weird things in their house, and young men have left their house screaming to get away from them in their mentorship. Meek Mills. <laughs> Bashir Gray. Left that house screaming. August the only one that stayed, and I guess he was really sick. He needed that. CNN drops explosive video featuring Will Smith and Diddy, sparking widespread curiosity. Details are scarce, but speculation is rampant. What's behind their intriguing encounter? A secret gesture, unexpected collaboration, or something more shocking? The internet's abuzz with theories. Stay tuned as we dig into this developing story and uncover the truth behind the captivating footage. She came out of left field. Yeah, no, I, I thought she was gonna be great because she, yeah, yeah. she, she came no, she came different. I said the generation Z will buy into different. Do you see how different she is now? I'll shave my eyebrows and I'll still show up on the red carpet. And Do I'm you like, see how different she is now? Oh yeah, oh yeah. It's kinda wild it's kinda wild now. And I, I don't think she's done. I don't think she's done. I, I think it's more to come. I think she can't be done. <laughs> he said she can't be done. I think she can never stop. So I think if she stops, she'll turn into a 90-year-old woman and be sure, yeah, look at your feet. <laughs> the wool cover. <laughs> oh, it's been a spin. So, so she looks like a, she reads, listen to me. She gives, she, she's giving me witch. Yeah. Oh, yeah, I'm, I'm sure that's what she's trying to give. No, if you go back and you look at, um, what's the movie? The Witches with yeah, Angelica Houston? Yeah. No, Angelica oh, no, Houston, uh, the, witches, witches. Yeah, the Witches. Yeah, the Witches, yeah. She looked like them bitches when they would come out of their wings. <laughs> Turn into mouses, goddamn. And then the nose is, ah, they're gonna eat your children. <laughs> you know, and all of that shit. Like, no, hey, she's hey, giving yeah, that. I want people to stop Google the witches with Angelica yeah. Houston and then Shout come out in. to Angelica Houston. You everything, man. <laughs> no. And you were, you were awesome as Morticia. No one will ever awesome. play Morticia yeah, like you. Shout out Wednesday. <laughs> but, uh, you know, it's like, this bitch is giving me witch. So it brings me to my question. We talked about it yesterday, and we talked about the the Turn that goddamn cat. Then that cat, that goddamn cat. <laughs> Listen to me. You know, you know that the cats were the guardians in the tombs. Oh, teach me something. Yeah, in the tombs, they would put cats in there. They were the guardians for the spirit world. Oh, okay. And they okay. would chase away evil spirits to keep them out of the sarcophaguses and stuff like that. I'm yeah. always weary of motherfuckers with cats. Oh, sometimes. okay, yeah, oh, cat lady, yeah, yeah, yeah. Especially if you're into black magic. She gives me that vibe. She gives me that vibe, and I think if she stops, she's on, she'll be like 80, you know? If you were to see, they have a new biopic with Whitney Houston coming out, I don't, if, if they play this movie and you see no kind of drugs in this movie, do you feel like it's an injustice to what this looks? I feel like, like anything was. with her name on it is strictly for the purposes of financial gain for those who have access to her estate, including Clive Davis. Including Clive Davis. Clive Davis. This ain't a film to celebrate Whitney Houston. This is a film to, uh, you know, pay the, pay, the, pay the piper. He was the one trying to bring her back, though, at the time of prior to her death, right? Fuck it, him. Uh, okay. He needed her back. Oh, yeah. He needed her back, but he needed her back and under his control. Mm. You want to know what fucking Clive Davis did for Whitney Houston? Oh. Why he was busy trying to bring her back? See, people forget before she came to the United States, he sent her on an international tour. Time to dissect the viral video that's generating buzz. The footage shows Will Smith and Diddy in an upscale hotel room, sparking intrigue. While it's not salacious, it's certainly interesting. Here's what stands out. Will Smith appears intense, dressed impeccably in a crisp white shirt, but his body language tells a different story. Fidgeting hands and darting eyes convey nervous energy. D, meanwhile, exudes calmness, lounging on a leather couch in designer shades, sipping a luxury beverage. 
His nodding suggests interest, but his demeanor says otherwise. How they came up with the name and everything. We were sitting in front of the uh, apartment building on 74th and Park Avenue. It was me, him, Tony De Niro. Puff was upstairs. They was trying to figure out he had became Puff, one of Puff's personal assistants. You understand? To make sure all sh Puff shit is there when we get ready to go. Everything that was supposed to be in order. That was Farnsworth Bentley job. When Puff has to go to restaurants or places like that, you know, uh, he made sure everything was straight with that. You know what I'm saying? And he had another assistant too. Uh, but Farnsworth Bentley was his personal assistant. Put out his clothes, told him what he should wear, all that, like a stylist and personal assistant, all together. You know, so we was in front of the house, and um, this dude Tony De Niro, he played guitar in that uh, Bad Boy for Life. The black dude, not the white guy, the black dude who played the guitar, that's Tony De Niro. I think he might be from California or something. So Tony De Niro was like, yo, we got to think of a name for you, man. And if you're going to be his personal assistant and uh, slash butler slash umbrella carrier, whatever you going to do, you understand? We got to think of a name for you. We, we're going to try to make you like Bentley or either uh, uh, Fonsworth or either Bent. You gotta be, you know, you gotta have that kind of persona. You gotta dress all the time, be neat and the whole nine yards. And then the dude, Derek was playing with him like, yeah, yeah, I know what you're talking about. I know how to do that. I could be over the top. You know, he was acting like that. You know what I'm saying? I could be over the top. So he was saying that and uh, the dude Tony De Niro said, we got to figure out a name for you, man. It's got to be on the level of, you know, those characters. He said, He's gotta, you got to be like Fonsworth. You got to be like Bentley. He said, Fuck it. we're just going to call you Fonsworth Bentley. And he said, I like it. And they start calling him that. His name Fonsworth Bentley. And I said, these motherfuckers, corny. <laughs> like I, was, I was like, yo, please this shit. But he was always right there, but not like at nighttime when we was at doing things, he was he wasn't he wasn't around, bro. He was only there when the cameras was there and shit like that. You know, I don't know, you know, I don't know how much he was he could do. I don't I don't know if he would say anything, because he probably signed the ND, a non-disclosure. And he don't want to say anything against Puff anyway because Puff got shit on him. And I ain't talking about no sexual shit or none of that shit. The nigga was stealing, bro. <laughs> yo, bro. The nigga's a... Yo, he got... He, I don't want to put that on sticky fingers. That nigga, that nigga right there, bro, don't lay nothing down around him. You hear me? Don't lay nothing down around dude right there. Dog, Jennifer Lopez had these boots. They cost $5,000. I'm like, what kind of fucking boots cost $5,000? Now, you got to realize this is like in 2000, early 2000s. These boots cost $5,000. And because she was going to be out of, out of the country or something like that, she didn't have them come to her house down in the village because she would have never got it because they'd be stealing her stuff down there at our apartment. So she had them come to Puff House. She wanted these boots so bad. She was mad. We, you know, they was they looked through everything trying to find Jennifer boots. Because Puff had like a... Yo, Puff... People used to just give him shit and send him shit from everywhere. So he had this room, this mail room in his house with numbers just... Shit that he never even opened. But I don't know how Fonsworth Bentley found that shit. But we went over there to his house and we found a lot of Jennifer shit and everybody else's shit that belonged to Puff.
I guess I guess Puff had too much stuff in the room and he was just keeping them for it. And you seeing this with your own eyes? That's crazy, man. My own eyes, bro. We went to his apartment. He don't even seem like that type of dude, yo, but damn. Security. Security also we went over there, man. They had to do shit, bro. And that's why Puff had stopped messing with him. And then he goes get a show. Puff ain't say nothing. He went and got a show of how to be a teaching thugs how to be the gentleman. I hope the first thing he taught them off was it. Don't steal. The drama unfolds as Will Smith takes a surprising knee, sending shockwaves. But this isn't a romantic proposal. It appears more like a desperate plea. Day's nonchalant response is priceless, raising an eyebrow and sipping his drink like ice runs through his veins. The luxurious setting is unmistakable. A penthouse with a stunning city skyline view, champagne on ice, and exquisite artwork adorning the walls. The plot thickens when Will pulls out his phone, revealing something that captivates Diddy's attention. The camera can't catch the screen, but Diddy's reaction is telling. He removes his shades, leans in, and his eyes widen in shock, surprise, or perhaps even fear. Because of the artist that I just spoke to not that long ago that got invited to a party at their house. Everything was cool up front till they went to the back and there was a bunch of old fucking niggas and fucking young boys back there, all ass naked in the Wade house. So I find it funny that Gabrielle's sitting there talking shit about Boosie. Maybe you suspicious of him because of the shit that's happening in your house, bitch. Mm. Fuck out of here. These niggas be talking greasy on all kinds of shit. But I don't like when these so-called black Hollywood couples want to come in and then they want to sit there and play gatekeeper. Meanwhile, they're abusing and misusing all kinds of young people. Mm. And guess what? Don't nobody want to admit that they a victim. So they pretend to be friends. Ah, uh, yeah. Will Smith ain't slapped that nigga over love. He slapped that nigga because that bitch told him to. <laughs> what are <I> eyes? <laughs> or maybe, because she's looking a little hocus pocus these days too. Is it alopecia? Or was it like, you know, entrance into the club? I don't know. Mm. But shit don't look right. You fucking see Tiger Woods and the next thing you know, he damn near die in a fucking car accident. I don't fucking know. Mm. I know she gangster as fuck. <laughs> I know she from Baltimore. And I know there's no shame in that region. I know that for a fact. Mm. So, you know... Uh, the movie Emancipation, um, how the fuck you gonna play in a movie called Emancipation and you can't emancipate yourself? Ooh, bars. Cause you trapped in a hole. My nigga, you trapped in a hole. This bitch clowning you day after day after day after day. And, and, and once again, I hate saying these things because their children are dope. But Jaden's kind of MIA and considering that he emancipated from their household at 16 and refused to come back even to do family interviews. That's you know? It. Yeah. Willow's just kind of, she's dope. I just, too much shit happened in that fucking house. Too much shit happened in that fucking house. And meanwhile, I go to jail for defending my child and these niggas don't even get a CPS fucking visit for the kind of shit they, they kids see. You know? There you go. So yeah, I'll watch the movie when, you know, I'll watch Emancipation when he emancipates himself from the uh, the hell that he lives in that he tries to call marriage with that woman who still wished Tupac was alive. <laughs> but enjoy the film. Buy lots of popcorn. I ain't supporting shitty fucking though. He's a bad representation for black men. He is literally the epitome of a ballless man. I'm sick and tired of people making our black men look weak. I'm sick and tired of that shit because I don't know no nigga that would put up with the shit that that bitch done put him through. Now you could justify staying because you ain't wanna cut up the money because she would've got the child support and the alimony, but the kids is grown. So if you stay now, 
It's either because you're being blackmailed to stay or you too lazy to go. He housebroken. That don't fit right for a Philly nigga. Mm. But he did grow up in Overbrook though. <laughs> he didn't technically grow up in West Philly. That, that, was, that was Jazzy Jeff's life he was writing about. He lived over there, not far from where Kobe Bryant grew up. That's the other side of City Avenue. He, he came up overbroke, you know, so they, were, they had big houses and he wasn't at the playground, get beat up. That was Jazzy Jeff. He lived in the more suburb side off of City Avenue. He only, he went to Overbrook, you know, he went to the hood and then came home. I took my husband to where he used to go get his cheesesteaks at Larry's. Which was right there by the train station around the corner from the nice houses. He's been playing roles for a long time. But I'm sick and tired of seeing these so-called couples destroying young people, destroying young people. And look at August Alcina, like it's, he's so fucked off. I don't think that boy is his boyfriend. I think it's his bodyguard because his first show back in Miami, he gets beat up by Tory Lanez and his motherfucker, um, a bodyguard. And the nigga just got out the hospital. Like he, like these, this, these is little niggas. These is little niggas. <laughs> like it, it, it's almost like Will Smith called up Tory Lanez and fuck that nigga up for me. You know what I'm saying? Your first show back and you get you got to go back to the hospital. <laughs> All because you got taken advantage of by that bitch. Because they said it all started with Tory Lanez joking with him about the whole entanglement. That shit wasn't no entanglement, bitch. You fucking kid. You fucked a kid. And cheated on your husband. Like, let's stop dressing this shit up and making it seem like it's anything. If, if Jada did any of the fucking shit to Will, would, you, would your wife, would y'all women, would you stand for that? <laughs> oh, no. Nope. No. I ain't talking about a goddamn Listen to me. Listen to me, he needs my help. <laughs> like, like, are you fucking kidding me? I wanted to help him. He was so sick and he needed my help and you just figured you was gonna ride his dick until he got better, huh? <laughs> like, really? <laughs> if I was a 16 year old kid, and I had the opportunity to emancipate myself. I wouldn't stick around to watch my mom fuck my friends. I wish the fuck my mom would have. I'm sorry. Nah, yeah. Good, uh... Y'all know I get, I get passionate. <laughs> Y'all so clap. Is there any other movie you want to talk about? Y'all clapping. <laughs> <laughs> Man, we got a side show for next time. Jesus. Jaguar, we love you so much. Thank you for coming to sit down and talk with us. This was a real treat. I feel I'm high off this. I don't know. We finna kill him with this one. <laughs> we all going we we all gonna go off the grid after this for a little bit. <laughs> Uh, Listen to me. I'm back outside now. Uh, Fuck it. The internet is a buzz with speculation surrounding the cryptic video featuring Will Smith and Diddy. Theories range from a high-stakes business meeting to something more salacious. One thing is certain. This isn't your typical celebrity encounter. Puff and Tupac was like a couple, it seemed like to me. Uh, it was just a lot of weird shit going on, you know what I'm saying? The vibes ain't there. I guess that, that's what Tupac was talking about, the Illuminati and shit. It's like Vivica Fox was with this big gay man. He was 6'9". They called him, his name 6'9". He had the red hair with a big old booty and shit. Nobody was gay no more. What the fuck is going on here? It's just a lot of, a lot of weird shit, dude. You know what I'm saying? That shit, it ain't right. You know what I'm saying? I guess that's what Tupac, I guess he wanted to get up out of the Illuminati or something. But I, I seen her yeah, the other matter of fact, MC Light pulled off with Tanisha Arnold. You know what I'm saying? In her brand new 560. Black one. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, that shit weird, dude. Yeah, that's some weird ass shit going on, you know? Yeah. And what was Tupac doing at the party, yo? Him and Puff was there together. They was there, you know what I'm saying? That's why I don't know how they fucking fell out or nothing like that. They was road dogs. You know what I'm saying? He ain't even got pictures of him. He got on that uh, uh, that blue sweater with the turtleneck 
him and him hugged up like this with the black hat. Have you ever seen that picture? No, I don't recall, but I'm pretty sure I came across it. Yeah, 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 yeah. That picture there, that they was at that party that day. Yeah, it's just like a bunch of weird shit. That whole fucking yeah, that shit weird, dude. Yeah, bunch of uh, it ain't right. You know what I'm saying? No, I'm not no gay bastard or nothing. I mean, none of that shit, but that shit ain't right. You know what I'm saying? That shit, that whole party was weird old out. Yeah, and it was Jada Pickett. But you saying that, you saying the whole party was weird. What did you see at the party that made it weird? I mean, I'm confused. I guess it was the Illuminati. It's just weird. I know I wouldn't want to be part of no shit like that. You know what I'm saying? You know, I'm from the old school, dude, and uh, that shit wasn't really tolerated with my generation, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, hate crime, yes, but it's more tolerated these days and nothing like that. It's more, you know what I'm saying, more open now, you know what I'm saying? But back then it was kind of fishy, you know what I'm saying? Still kind of fishy, you know, but it's more, you know, out there now. The incident y'all had with Warren G and Kid Frost, tell me about that, my man. Okay, Kid Frost had gave a, a party at the House of Blues. One of our big homeboys wanted to go with us. You know what I'm saying? So he went with us and we, he said, Ooh, you young niggas have fun. So one of uh, Kid Frost homies still on my big homie. But he didn't know that he was around, uh, it was maybe about 20 of us. So. We, the dude that uh, socked my big homie, we beat the dog shit out of him. So my big homie, he came too. He uh, he like, that's the motherfucker? We like, yeah. And it was two security guards had him. Had uh, had the dude that we beat up from Kid Frost entourage. So uh, my big homie knocked that motherfucker out while the yellow jacket, you know, the yellow jackets with the event security, they had the dude so my homie still knocking him out. Boom! So the, the dude with the uh, yellow jacket was talking shit. Man, what the fuck is wrong with him? My homeboy knock out him too. Bam! Like, ooh! So the other one like, man, he got back. Little Jamaican dude come up talking shit. Man, are you going crazy? My homeboy sock him too. So we went down to get our car for valet. And it was the dude, it's LBC. And he like, what the fuck is that? And he's like, it's Long Beach City Crip. So my homeboy knew this dude was an imposter. He, if you're from Long Beach, you're gonna say Roller Twenties are insane. You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? You're a real uh, block boy. You know what I'm saying? 19th Street. You gonna say something? A real crip said this nigga say he from Long Beach City Crip. My homeboy like, wait a minute, and knocked him out too. So uh, one G them was down there. Him and said to the police waiting on their cars. And they I get they seen my homeboy get busy like that. So they. So uh, they had left before us, went up to Fat Burgers. So we came, got in our shit. They finally brought our cars to ballet. We went up to Fat Burgers. And one of the years, so Cedric Zabalas was up there already, you know, eating their shit and shit. So we came in there. The big homie, like, uh, hey, motherfucker. He pointed at Cedric Zabalas, like, man. You've been dumping us for years, mother. I'm losing all my motherfucking money betting on your motherfucking ass. So uh, Warren G was right there. He like, my homie like, man, that's a nice ass watch. So uh, he like, uh, man, let me try that on. You know what I'm saying? So uh, by then, uh, my homeboy, somebody had got my homeboy attention. And he turned his head. Shit, Cedric Zabalas and what's his name was in there. Uh, he was in the rag top 500 pins. This motherfucker like jumped off. I mean, he he drove up off the motherfucker. He didn't even pay attention to the curve. He jumped off of the curve instead of using the uh, you know, the driveway. That shit was funny. But my homie like, damn, we almost bust this whole fucking engine block. Yeah, that's that that shit was funny as a motherfucker. The drama surrounding Will Smith and Diddy's mysterious meeting is taking over the internet. Celebrities are losing their minds, and Twitter's going wild with theories and memes. Some folks think Will was pitching a movie idea or begging Diddy for a collab, while others are just enjoying the chaos. Jada Pinkett Smith's tweet has everyone scratching their heads, though. 
Sometimes what looks like pleasing is just good business. Is she defending Will or throwing shade? It's hard to tell, but one thing's for sure. Their marriage has been under scrutiny lately. Remember that infamous entanglement scandal with August Alsina? Yeah, that was a whole thing. A birthday party that I think either Matt Damien was given for Ben Affleck. It was just a little gathering. It was at the Four Seasons. Will Smith and his sister and her husband, we were all sitting on this side of the room. Matt Damien, uh, Ben Affleck, Jennifer Lopez, Puff, Will Smith, and uh, Jada, and they were sitting on the other side of the room. So I know Puff so well that he stood up. When he stood up, he walked and like, and did his own some, some kind of way like, and then he went like this, you know, like, and I went over towards him. I know to go over there towards him. So I go over towards him and he said to me, he said, yo, I think Will and Jada is trying to scoop up Jennifer. I want you to stay close because I'm a snuffer. <laughs> I said to myself, Will Smith gonna beat the shit out of you. <laughs> now, Puff, 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 Puff could scrap now, but I don't think he could beat Will Smith. You know what I'm saying? But he can scrap. You know what I'm saying? So then he said that shit. So I didn't go back over there where um, Will Smith's sister and her husband was. I stayed like in the, like about, if he snuffed Will, I could move slow enough that Will could probably get two or three punches back in. <laughs> Yeah, but uh, that shit was funny. He thought that uh, Jada and Will was coming on too strong to Jennifer, making advances. Reactions to the Will Smith and Diddy drama are flooding in. 50 Cent, never one to hold back, posted on Instagram, Big Willie's style ain't what it used to be. In contrast, Viola Davis tweeted a voice of reason, let's not jump to conclusions, we don't know the full story. The fan base is split. Some are quick to cancel Will, sensing scandal, while others defend him fiercely, citing his decades-long entertainment legacy. Go for him. My man, listen here. All those ones, all the, all those ones who made it to the Diddy party, to the after party, and to the hotel lobby. <laughs> they not gonna ruin their brand. They not gonna say nothing. Man, I was watching the other day. Listen to me. They did that, they on Channel 2 News here in New York. Gail King and Nate and that other guy, they were talking about, they showed the, the uh, him beating Cassie and they showed him uh, the apology in the whole nine yards. All they said is that we have commentary about that, but we got to go to a commercial. They never came back and said nothing about it. I was like, yo, damn, he still got power like that. Somebody still like him like that. Cause you know, he was running with Oprah and them. He was running with that whole crew. Weinstein, Oprah, Epstein. He was running with that whole crew. They want to know how we're going to do it. How the public is going to take him. Is the public going to uh, let him back in? And the public is not. The public is already canceling him. I don't believe the industry has canceled him yet. All those people who went to those Diddy parties, not one of them had came out and denounced what he has done. I haven't heard one of them. I have not heard one person denounce, well, man, let, let God handle it. Let get the hell out of here. 
Get out of here with that. If that was your daughter, would you let God handle it? All those people, they ain't denounced them. They ain't definitely, they, they, they can't, they can't come forward and, and say, yo, I support them because it would mess up their brand. It would mess up their brand. Jay-Z, we the only one could call each other Sean. Jay, Jay is the only one calling me, could call me Sean. I'm the only one could call him Sean. Get the hell out of here. If that ain't no fun boy stuff, But you ain't had not one person, brother, not one person sit there, denounce what he did, or come forward and say, I support him. Yeah, it's crazy, man. Nobody haven't came out to support him, man. Not one person outside of Stevie J. Stevie don't count, bro. Day's bad boy image might shield him from severe backlash, but this drama still tarnishes his reputation. For Will, this could mark the end of his squeaky clean image or merely a temporary blip. PR teams are likely working overtime to spin the situation. This story won't fade soon, with new developments constantly fueling the fire. He know who to do that shit to. You understand what I'm saying? It's certain dudes that he'll do that to because he could he could get away with it quick enough or he got somebody behind him or he got some people there they no matter going to take his way for. It's only so far he's going to go himself. It's only so far he's going to go himself. So now, you know, he's going to come at you hard. Try to play it off. Because he know if he do anything and it comes back to him, it's a lawsuit. He slapped somebody, hit somebody. That's a payday for them. But he'll make up that whole atmosphere. And then he'll look at one of the bouncers or look at somebody a certain way. And they'll take over his mess. So... I could see him coming at somebody hard like that. But by itself, he ain't gonna bust a grape in a wine factory. But he don't have to. People are buzzing about a possible business move between Will Smith and Diddy. Some think Will might be seeking Diddy's investment in a new venture. But if that's the case, why all the secrecy? And what was on that phone that seemed to leave Diddy so unsettled? Then, there's the speculation linking this to the recent drama with Jada. Ever since she opened up about their entanglements, people are wondering if Will has his own revelations. Is he seeking advice or even permission from Diddy? And let's not overlook the leak itself. Who shared this video? And why? Was it an attempt to shake Will's image? Or maybe even a calculated publicity stunt? Either way, it's got people talking. From the Oscars slap to Jada airing their personal issues, Will's reputation has been through the ringer. Some think this is a final blow to his good guy image, while others see it as just another Hollywood story. All right, but I want to ask you, right? And I know you ain't signing. I know you ain't signing NDA, clearly. But did, did he make his artist sign NDAs and people that work for him? Well, a lot of these rappers, a lot of these industry people, anybody who does business nowadays with the internet, they have indies, non-disclosure. That means that if you work for them, you around them, you can't disclose any of the information about them. It's the same thing that he gave to all his artists when he gave them their publishing back. I'm going to give y'all y'all publishing, but y'all can't talk about Janice Cohn, Justin Cohn, uh, Sony, Bad Boy, or anything that happened. Y'all can't talk about none of that. But there's some artists that didn't say anything, that didn't sign it, and they able to talk about 
anything they want to. And I think that's those girls that was, I think Danny D. Kane. I, I think a couple of them didn't sign it. And boy, oh boy, they probably going to go after him too. Because I heard him, and I'm giving you this, Aubrey. He stood up there and he said in front of a lot of people, we were in the studio. And I said something to him and walked out the studio. He said, yo, I'm a drug their ass off and pick them up and, and, and pip them out to my <laughs> pip them out to my neck. He said, I'm a drug them out. I'm gonna get them all on drugs and I'm gonna pimp their ass out to my neck. And I was like, do somebody kids and walked out. And it's somebody that heard me. It's somebody that heard me. I mean, well, it's not only somebody that heard me. It's somebody that I know who was in the studio at the time that it happened. And I still talk to him today. And we were just talking about that the other day. He didn't move back to Indiana. I don't know why. I'm going to give you that one. Recent allegations surrounding scene Diddy Combs and Will Smith have sparked significant attention. If proven, these allegations could impact their careers and public images. Diddy has faced controversy before, but this situation's severity may differ. Legal repercussions are also possible, depending on investigation's outcomes. Regarding Will Smith, his reputation as Hollywood's golden boy may be affected. Following the Oscars incident and these new allegations, his career trajectory remains uncertain.